So I have a really great idea. You know all that fruit that you buy in the summer times, especially those pineapples, because uh, who, what kid doesn't want a pineapple? SpongeBob lives in it. And don't tell me your kids don't want SpongeBob because my kids are still watching it. It's driving me nuts. If you have rotten pineapple or almost rotten pineapple sitting on your counter, get out your knife because I'm gonna show you a great snack for your kids that they're really gonna love. Your full supply list as well as the blog post are both linked below. So the first thing I'm going to show you how to do is how to break down a pineapple. So simply just cut the base off, cut the top off, and discard. I'm sticking it in my little trash bowl over there. Thank you, Rachel Ray. And then I'm going to tell you just to lightly cut the edges off, but to try to make sure that you get these little things that I call eyes. I don't actually know if they're eyes because... They're just like little spots that the stick sticks out and I don't want to eat it and I flunked the anatomy of a pineapple class so I'm going to call them eyes. The center of the pineapple has a core and you're going to want to cut around the core or just slice the edge of the core off keeping as much flesh as you possibly can. They do make a really cool little tool for cutting a pineapple down. I however have just never thought of buying one until just now but you know a knife works really well a mandolin is another tool that works really well if it's sharp mine however was not very sharp and all it wanted to do was eat my pineapple instead of cutting it correctly so i got out my kitchen knife which you could do this entire thing with a kitchen knife and cut it at a fourth of an inch strips which look look at that look it looks perfect just you know make sure that you don't cut your fingers while you're enjoying slash envious of my slicing abilities i'm gonna go ahead and tell you how to cook this so preheat your oven to 175 degrees. That's 175, right? Yes, that's right. For eight hours, you're going to cook it. So get cookie sheets and either those slip match, which by the way, I love the slip mats or wax paper. Line it all around. Just, I mean, just give them enough room. That way you can go ahead and flip them several times while they're cooking. If you are using a dehydrator, you're going to cook it at 135 degrees. I usually cook it for 24 hours because we like them crispy. And a little secret, I also try to hide it from my kids. I know that they can hear the dehydrator, but this one doesn't make that much noise. So if they know about it, they're going to eat it a lot faster. Food storage wise, you've got several options here. If it's completely dried out, you can put it in a food saver bag and suck all the air out or just an airtight container. If it's chewy, it doesn't seem to last as long. So an airtight container on the table seems to work the best at my house and let me know what works at yours. I hope this video gave you lots of ideas of other things that you can dehydrate like apples or peaches or oranges. By the way, I've never dehydrated an orange. So if you do that, let me know. Um, the full supply list is down in the bottom as well as the blog post. You have more ideas of how to keep your kids busy of the, up to, in the eye and then some really unhealthy snacks on this side for after school. And then down there, click to subscribe because you know, why not? We've got more ideas coming. I'm sure of some sort. And then you can find me at brilliantlittleideas.com or on Instagram at brilliantlittleideas. And hit that little bell. <laughs>